What's up YouTube, Biz Matthew here and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you all how recently I had to stop a seller from backing out of the contract. I had to, uh, you know, calm their emotions, just go through this whole process early on in my wholesaling journey. And so I'm just gonna share that story with you all. Now, before we go on, be sure to like this video, subscribe, comment down below and turn on post notification bell make sure you smash that like button as you all know liking this video and this channel just helps this channel become more discoverable for other people to learn about this amazing business of wholesaling real estate and also just learn about financial freedom especially during this pandemic and these crazy times this is very important for people to know and so just a disclaimer i'm not making hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on this um, business but i've been able to do some deals and i'm just documenting my journey here on the channel and i'm also just um t teaching you all and letting you all know what i'm learning on the way my mistakes the ups and downs of it and, and the, the good things that i'm learning about this business and hopefully you all can learn from this story so basically around my area we had a tornado and so with that there are tornado damaged properties and I, that's a property that i never dealt with and so with this particular seller um, i've been sending um, this couple letters because they have rentals around the area but when their primary residency uh, got affected by the tornado they called me up seeing what i have to offer and so with that uh you know i i called them up we talked on the phone and they were just saying, hey, you know, we can hire a contractor. He quoted us a price, but we're thinking maybe we can just sell it as is without going through that process. And, you know, we talked about numbers over the phone and they gave me a price. I went to visit it, visit the property. And now with this specific property, since it was a tornado damaged property, I wanted to make sure I really had a buyer for this property. Uh, they're asking around $50,000 for the property all fixed up. The property would probably be worth two twenty. dollars now, mind you, it's tornado damage. So like in a master bedroom, there's no roof, no, no ceiling um, on the property at all. And so, um, which, you know, at 50,000, you could still put like a hundred grand in, into it and sell it for 220, you know what I mean? So you're all in 150. So, so with this um, deal, I partnered with another wholesaler, a big, bigger wholesaler in town that had a larger cash buyer list, people who they knew were looking for tornado damaged properties. And so partnered with them, they said, hey, yeah, 50,000 would be a good price. So we locked them up at 50,000. But during that time, um, this is an important lesson that I'm learning right now when you're partnering with people. You know, number one, you gotta make sure you develop that trust with that other um, wholesaler in town. You know, make sure you uh, go on the Facebook group, see if they're involved, if they're engaging, you know, what, what do other people say about them? What do other investors say about them? And so um, I did close a fire damage property with them before so I knew they were legit and everything so I trusted them with this specific property also so 50,000 um, was the contract price and so when we put them under contract since I'm a wholesaler and I do not have cash to close on properties myself I, I let the seller know hey you know I'm not necessarily buying your property. I work with investors that bring in the funds to, to purchase this property, but you know, we're working together on this deal. And I just need to reaffirm with my investors that this is a deal for them. And so I'm not guaranteeing that I'm buying the property, but that my investors have to look at the property and make sure it's a go for them. But in order for us to do that, we have to have an agreement. We have to have this contract signed. And so, that's my main approach since you know i don't have fifty thousand dollars laying around just to buy a house in cash close but not not almost there <laughs> but um it, this other wholesaler since they they do plenty of deals they're six figures a month easily close to six figures a month in assignment fees they're able to do that so when they approach the property they say hey we're buying this property even though they are wholesaling it uh, once they go into contract with a property it's going to close no matter what because they do have cash to buy it themselves if they need more time to find the buyer and so i think we just weren't on the same page you know 
on the communication side with things because I usually approach it that way. They approach it, hey, we're buying this property, it's a done deal. So when I told the seller that, the wife, she still had the idea that this deal was kind of up in the air. So she was still inviting other investors to look at the property. And when my partner uh, went to bring their investors there, there were other investors that she called and she got upset. And these other investors started bad mouthing um, the, my partner that I'm working with saying he's bogus, that they're they're not a legit company, that they're middlemen and things like that, which, you know, we are middlemen, but I mean, he doesn't, he's not a scammer. I mean, and there was just making up all these lies, which really brought the trust of the seller extremely down. And, you know, she was, she had concerns, she wanted to back out. You know, the husband was a little bit more calm, but the woman, she was a little bit more emotional with it. And, you know, when, when the wife, especially about the house, when the wife says something, you know, you gotta take it serious because that's her home, basically. I mean, when you're buying a house as a couple, you're, it's really the wife buying it. So with that, uh, she went to back out. She wanted to, you know, even go with the contractor and just not sell it as is to any investors, just with all the craziness happened. And she just got very frustrated and she lost a lot of trust. And so, you know, and she was just keep on, you know, telling me, hey, I just want to back out, back out. I was like, hey, you know, calm down. You know, we are closing on this property, you know, because um, my partner said, hey, you know, if we have to close on this property with 50,000, we have the cash to do that. And we're dedicated to do that. So we put our EMD at the title company. We told her, hey, the EMD is at the, the deposit is at the title company. We're locked in on this deal. You know, we cannot cancel out, but she was still wanting to cancel. And then, um, you know, she just kept on reminding me. She was like, but you were saying, you know, you have to show your investors, make sure it's a deal for them. I was like, yeah, it, it is a deal for us now. Um, and so now if I'm working with a partner, another wholesaler, and they're big time, you know, they have cash to close, I, I'll just come up with the approach, hey, I'm buying this property, period. You know, and, um, you know, that was just a learning lesson for me. Um, because on the first deal that I worked with them, I still was going to an approach, hey, you know, we have to show our investors. And the seller was fine with that. He knew that we were middlemen. Like, I didn't have to say, hey, we're buying this property with our cash or anything. Like, it was fine. But with the second deal with this other wholesaler, um, the seller was just kind of emotional. And, you know, uh, you know, it was a good learning experience. And the other wholesaler that I'm working with, they were saying, hey, it's good that you learned this early on because this hardly happens to us at all. Like, this never happens to us. Um, so it's good that you learned this early on um, in your uh, business. So anyways, uh, she was like at the point, the sellers, you know, the wife was ready to just cancel out, just go with the contractor. He, she was all like, yeah, the contractor's coming tomorrow morning. And I was just talking with my wholesaler. I was like, hey, you know, she seems very motivated to cancel out this contract. Um, should we cancel out? I mean, I had more deals in the pipeline. I don't want to force this or push this or anything. But, you know, I'm kind of glad I partnered with him because I was kind of locked in with, with him in the deal. And he was like, no, you know, um, we're dedicated to this deal. Um, and if we have to go to court, we're going to go to court because, you know, legally she signed a contract. Legally, we have a deposit at the title company. And, she, you know, he was just saying, hey, you know, I... I'm, I'm dedicated to bring my attorney into this. And so it's not that he was being pushy, but he was just, you know, we were just understanding that she, this is just rumors come going along, gossip and how um, she was just being emotional, really. Um, and so, you know, I was the mediator between, I guess, the seller and my wholesaler. All right. So if, anyways, you know, I was able to calm down the seller a little bit, just reaffirm them. Hey, you know, if we have to go to court for this, we, we're willing to do that. You know, and I just try to say it in a nice way, just trying to calm him down. It's like, hey, you know, in real estate, that's the name of the game. Sometimes people will make lies over other people just to get a property, just to get a deal. And that's what's happening right now. And, you know, we just, I mean, we had the title come company contact her is just reassuring hey you know we close deals with this guy all the time you know we're fine we're legally you know we're on the process we're opening up escrow we're doing a title search on this property it's all good and I think after that it really calmed her down uh, and the husband was good too of course and 
yeah, we were able, you know, we're still in escrow right now. And I'll just give you all more, more updates on this prop, um, on this, on this deal. We already have our cash buyer and everything in, but if we have to still close with our own cash, we're willing to do that. I just want to tell you all that story because I'm just documenting my journey. You know what, what I'm learning on along the way, and just having to be able to communicate well with number one, your sellers, and if you're partnering with someone. Um, your other partner wholesalers and even if they're not communicating as much ask those questions to them so they can communicate better to you and um, also just knowing what's the process how someone else works and how you work so it really helped my emotional IQ in real estate and wholesaling and in my sales negotiation skills because I was able to reaffirm to the seller hey everything's all right this is happening. I'll have the title of the company call you. Um, this is the process. Everything's fine. You know, there's this gossip in this community. This is a very competitive industry, um, if you don't know. And, you know, just trying to build more rapport with them. And, yeah, it was just a good experience. You know, even though I had high stresses one day, low stresses, it was just a roller coaster. I was like, dang, why am I dealing with this? But it was all good. You know, it's part of the process. And I'm glad I'm learning that. You know kind of early on um, after doing some deals so I hope you all enjoyed this video I hope you all found it helpful and I just want to leave off by saying you know just communicate well with your sellers if you're working with whole other wholesalers and your end buyers you know about the process on what you're doing how you're approaching sellers and how they're approaching sellers so Make sure you all like this video, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll catch you all on the next one.